untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. It's been a while since our last one, but it's back with today's FNM, so I thought we would take a look at this Professor Onyx deck, which is featuring the new 6-mana Planeswalker from Strixhaven. Starts out at 5 loyalty and has a passive ability with Magecraft, saying whenever we cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, each opponent loses 2 life and we gain 2 life, and that's going to be one of our primary win conditions in this deck. Then the plus 1 ability provides card advantage, making us lose 1 life, and then we can and look at the top three cards of our library, put one of them into our hand, rest into our graveyard. The minus three makes each opponent sacrifice a creature with the greatest power among creatures that player controls. And then the minus eight ultimate can also help us close out the game, since each opponent may discard a card, and if they don't, they lose three life, and we get to repeat this process six more times. Then taking a look at the rest of the deck, you'll notice some of the Mystical Archive cards that we can't really play in any other format, like Dark Ritual, the single mana instant that adds triple black to our mana pool, so great for ramping into our Professor Onyx ahead of schedule. Let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At 1 mana we've got Blood Chief's Thirst as a cheap removal spell, can also be kicked for 2 in a black to take out larger creatures and planeswalkers. Cling to Dust also has quite a bit of synergy since we can escape it out of the graveyard, and Liliana's plus 1 ability is great at putting a lot of cards in our graveyard to make it easier to escape and find the escape cards in the first place, and then can act as a bit of graveyard hate slash card advantage and can also gain life if needed. Then of course Dark Ritual, we've got Fatal Push as a 1 mana instant speed removal spell, and then we have a few discard effects with Inquisition of Kozilek, as well as Thoughtseize, and then Knight of the Ebon Legion as just a premium 1 drop that can help us close out the game as well. Then at 2 mana we've got Chainer's Edict as another removal spell making the opponent sacrifice a creature, can also be flashed back for 5 and double black, so once again great synergy with Professor Onyx. Then we've got Doomblade from the Mystical Archives, destroying target non-black creature. We've got Feed the Swarm, which can destroy enchantments, which is a rare thing for a black deck, so it's quite valuable as well. Heartless Act as more spot removal, and the Grasp of Darkness giving a creature minus four, minus four. And then Liliana's Triumph, another Edict effect, and if we control a Liliana Planeswalker, the opponent also has to discard a card. Then we've got some random chomp blockers with the Dusk Legion Zealot, draws a card when it enters a battlefield, can help protect our planeswalkers. And same goes for Yarox Fenlurker, which makes the opponent exile a card from their hand and can then protect our Liliana afterwards. Sign in Blood, another nice addition from the Mystical Archives, can draw two cards at the cost of two life, but we can also use this to burn the opponent out if they're low on life, especially in combination with Professor Onyx's Magecraft ability. And then we've got some 2-mana Artifact Ramp with Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, and finally Mindstone. And Maze Mind Tome, another nice card draw engine for the deck. Phyrexian Arena, another nice card draw engine as well. Can draw an extra card at the beginning of our upkeep at the cost of 1 life, but with all the life gain from the Magecraft ability we can easily make up for it. Then we've got a ton of removal here, especially instants and sorceries to trigger Magecraft. So we've got Murderous Rider, which can destroy creature or planeswalker with Swift End, and then give us a 2-3 life linker afterwards. Cry of the Carnarium, a nice sweeper giving all creatures minus 2 minus 2 and exiling them as well. We've got Soul Shatter, which essentially has the same effect as Liliana's minus 3 ability, but it also hits planeswalkers, so great at dealing with hexproof creatures that we otherwise have difficulty targeting. Then at 4 mana we've got Baleful Mastery from Strixhaven, can potentially cast it for 2 mana, otherwise 4 mana to exile a creature or planeswalker at instant speed. We've got Dread Presence as a great value creature in a deck with a lot of swamps, can draw us cards or deal damage. We've got Extinction Event as one of our sweepers, alongside a Ritual of Soot, and we're playing these sweepers over Languish so they don't destroy our own Dread Presence for example. Then Gonti, Lord of Luxury, just a great card in any Brawl deck, and no exception here. Hagar Mauling can be played as a land or a 4 mana removal spell. And then Psalm Simulacrum, another way to ramp towards our Professor Onyx, and when it dies also draws a card, so just a nice chum blocker to protect our Planeswalker and a great value card in general. And then topping off our curve, we've got Never to Return, which is more of a 3 mana removal spell to destroy a creature or planeswalker, and can also cast the Aftermath half from the graveyard to make a 2 2 zombie and exile a card from a graveyard. So also has good synergy with Professor Onyx's plus 1 ability. And then we've got Liliana Dreadhorde General as another powerful Liliana Planeswalker. Passive ability saying whenever a creature we control dies, we get to draw a card. So great with all those small creatures like Yarox Fenlurker and Dusk Legion Zealot. Then the plus one makes a 2 2 zombie token. The minus four makes each player sacrifice two creatures. And the minus nine ultimate is also game winning. 
And then last but not least, Blood on the Snow, in combination with all the snow lands in the mana base, can destroy all creatures or all planeswalkers, and then return a creature or planeswalker card with mana value X or less from our graveyard to the battlefield, where X is the amount of snow mana spent to cast it. And we even have one of our artifacts to generate snow mana with Cold Steel Heart, which also synergizes with Blood on the Snow. And then the mana base consists of Castle Lochthwain as another card draw engine, 20 snow covered swamps, and then some utility lands with Arch of Araska as another card draw engine. If we reach the city's blessing, Crawling Barons can turn into a creature, and Faceless Haven with those 20 snow covered swamps can also turn into a 4 3 creature to help us close out the game, maybe pressure opposing planeswalkers. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing an Extus deck, and uh, yeah, our hand seems fine. Lots of removal, Zealot to help us hit our land drops. And a Thought Sea is going to open up. So I'm guessing the color identity of Extus is Mardu, so our opponent can play reds and white cards as well. Opponent took the Ritual of Soot, so they might be a bit of a token deck trying to use the Awaken the Blood Avatar. And there we see Inspiring Vantage. Into a Valky to take my Dusk Legion Zealots. Well, we can kill Valky next turn if we want to. Probably hang on to Feed the Swarm, although it's a close call. Grasp is a nice answer to Exodus if they decide to play that instead. But the opponent could easily have some enchantments we want to get rid of. So maybe we'll just pass. And then keep up Grasp of Darkness and see what the opponent does. Alright, Kambal we probably have to deal with. So we'll kill that over Falky. So that explains why they took the Ritual of Soots. Mace Mind Tome's a good one. Don't know yet if I'm gonna scry, but we'll set a stop and upkeep just in case. So we have an answer for Extus if they run that out. Take two from Valky. And a young Pyromancer. Alright, so we wouldn't mind finding another Sweeper here. Looting. Gonna draw two and discard two. And they can maybe get those creatures back with Extus. As Eliminate and Magmatic Channeler hit the graveyard. Opponent's got one card left in hand. So let's cry, see if we can hit a Sweeper. Baleful Mastery is an answer to another creature here. Which I guess I don't mind, it also exiles, so they can't get it back. So sure, let's keep the mastery. So we could feed the swarm draw with tomb, or we could just baleful mastery the paramancer. Uh, close call. I guess using feed the swarm and then the opponent not knowing about baleful mastery to answer Axtus could be reasonable. And then I probably want to draw with Tome end of turn, although I have a valuable card in hand in case of a discard effect, so I might as well draw first in case it changes my play. And then maybe we'll pick up another removal spell instead. Alright, let's feed the Pyromancer. The only drawback here is that it doesn't exile it, so they can still get it back with Extus. But hopefully we can prevent Extus from staying in play for too long. It's going to be 5 mana, so if they have a 1 mana instant or sorcery, they can trigger Magecraft right away. Opponent hits for 3. And then we'll just take our draw step. And then get rid of Axtus right away. For the 4 mana version. See if they have a shock or some other 1 mana instant they don't. I'll keep my swamps in hand in case we draw Dread Presence. Alright. 
if they just play land 6, replay Axtus, we don't have a great answer lined up since Professor Onyx looks at the uh, greatest power, so they could just sacrifice Valky. It's gonna be a Braid to hit my tomb. Alright, let's cry a response. And a Blood on the Snow looks pretty good. Don't have any creatures to get back, but it is a way to potentially get back Liliana. So, can play Liliana and plus. The opponent might commit an extra creature to the board. And all of these are pretty good. I think I like the Phyrexian Arena as a card engine, although I guess we're at 9. So we don't have a ton of life to work with. Alright, let's take the Murder Strider then. Can also trigger Magecraft if needed. Opponent untaps. And best case scenario, they just tap out for Extus. Opponent flashes back looting instead. I guess we also have to watch out for Awaken the Blood Avatar, which could hit us out of nowhere. If I had let the Murder Strider go to the graveyard, we could have gotten it back with Blood on the Snow. So there was also consideration of just not taking the Murder Strider, but this is even better, because now they're gonna kill Onyx. We can let Professor Onyx go to the graveyard instead of the command zone and then cast Blood on the Snow with 6 snow mana to get her back. So move to command zone, decline. And then Blood on the Snow making sure to tap 6 snow mana. Destroying all creatures and getting back our Planeswalker. We also get our Dusk Legion Zealot back. And then cling to dust seems nice, just to gain a bit of life potentially. Opponent's gonna be empty handed, so Inquisition doesn't do much. And we've got a nice fully stocked graveyard to escape this a few times. Opponent runs out Bone Crusher Giant. Doomblade, a nice answer for it. All right, where do we start? Could also go for Murder Strider, so we can run it out, although it is an answer to Planeswalkers, which we otherwise don't have. And Doomblade doesn't hit Extus, so maybe we should use a Doomblade here. Let's start by plussing. Alright, Dread Presence, Liliana's Triumph, also a clean answer here that makes the opponent discard. So I guess we'll grab the Triumph. That way we don't have to take the 2 damage from Bonecrusher Giant. Trigger Magecrafts. We can cast the return half here if we want to, and then still have Cling to Dust up. Sure. What do we exile? Probably a creature, so they can get it back. Let's go with Kumball. And then we can Cling to Dust end of turn just to draw a card. Well, we're in a pretty great position here. Plenty of interaction in hand still. And we can start dealing a lot of damage with Magecraft. Alright, GG's. Opponent packs it in. Professor Onyx claims another victim onto the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Yurion Sky Nomad deck. And yeah, we've got an exciting hand here. Featuring Dark Ritual and two Ramp Artifacts. So what I could do turn 1 is Dark Ritual, play Mindstone, have one black floating, use Mindstone under floating mana to play Cold Steel Heart. I don't hate that idea. Yeah, let's go for it. Kind of like playing a turn 1 Soul Ring, except it took 3 cards. Just goes to show how busted Soul Ring is. And then next turn we can play Phyrexian Arena. And get this Crawling Burns out there, I think. 
that resolved. So now we've got our Cardra engine. Plenty of ramp for our planeswalkers. Alright, Banishing Light's gonna deal with Arena, sadly. Nope, goes for the Cold Steel Heart instead. Alright, don't really mind. And Simulacrum's great too. So next turn I could already play one of my Lilianas. If we suspect a counterspell, we could just activate Crawling Barons and start getting in there. I can play the Knight and activate Crawling Barons. So that's why these lands are so valuable. It's going to be a Prison Realm to Exile Solemn, so it doesn't trigger its death ability. That's fine, so we get to untap and play one of our Planeswalkers, and what do we prefer? We're probably not going to sacrifice many creatures with a Liliana, since the opponent's playing a control deck. But I would prefer to keep Onyx around for a bit longer. Close call. We'll go with uh, Dreadhorde General. I am the master here. <laughs> Good help is easy to find in war. Sir so Point's got five mana for a Reverend Hoplite, making a few tokens. All right. So we could make another zombie, play Professor Onyx. Play Knight of the Evil Legion. If our opponent plays Yorion, they can flicker their enchantment removal to get rid of our Planeswalkers, I guess is the thing. Maybe that's a reason to wait on the second Planeswalker. Let me just play Guardian Idol Knight. Make another zombie. Keep up Doomblade as well as potentially just pumping the Crawling Barons for 4 mana. Helios Punishment, my Knights, sure. And a Pacifism on my Zombie. Well, that makes using the minus 4 a lot less painful. So, I guess I didn't leave enough snow mana to make Faceless Haven into a creature here, but that's fine. Liliana takes two. So that's how it is. Don't think I need to Doom Blade, so we'll just power up our Crawling Barons. Fenlurker can take one of their two remaining cards. Although I could minus firsts. Alright, Castle Lockthwain, another nice card draw engine. Let's uh, Fenlurker. And yeah, I'm just gonna wait until they play Yorion to play my Professor Onyx, I think. And we'll pass and keep up Doomblade. I guess we can attack for two since we've got a lot of creature lands available. Alright, this seems fine. And Siori on time. And if they try to flick or hoplite, we can Doomblade in response. So, let's do that now. And then I'll probably get rid of Arena and Liliana. But we get to ramp again with Solm Simulacrum. And then it's finally time to play Professor Onyx. I guess they didn't give us the Simulacrum. So they're just gonna get rid of Liliana here. Or maybe they go for Phyrexian Arena after all. Alright, Liliana's gone, that's fine. So really seeing the power of Frex in Arena more than anything. So easily. Never to Return can answer Yorion. Baleful Mastery as well, so... Embarrassment of Riches. 
Time to play Professor Onyx, and then... I probably don't even need to minus, I can just plus... Liliana's Triumph is perfect here, make them sack Urion and discard our last card. And yeah, this game seems pretty over. And we get to attack for a bunch. Might as well pump Fenlurker. A roaming ghost slide gets to bounce my zombie token. Let's draw some more cards. And uh, sure, we'll take a Hagger Mulling. Probably want to keep some number of instant speed removal in hand, but again, we can't really go wrong here. Maybe time to start beating down with our Crawling Barons as well. And I'll keep up my Murder Strider just in case. But next turn we should be able to close out the game. Brazen Borer, gonna attempt to bounce my Professor Onyx, that's fine. So they seem just dead to my creature lands here. We'll send the Faceless Saven for good measure. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand facing Croxa, Titan of Death's Hunger. Yeah, we'll keep this. Got some removal, Maze Mind Tome, especially nice against the discard deck. So we'll see if they have a 1 mana discard effect to take a look, they don't. So I get to play my Mace Mind Tome before they take it away. And then we could be patient and just draw with the Tome instead of scrying. Opponent runs out Croxa. Against Red Black I probably don't need to blow up too many enchantments. So let's get rid of Feed the Swarm. And then I'll just take my draw step. Could be convinced to play a tapped Hagra Mauling and then draw with Tome, since we do need eventually 6 mana for Professor Onyx. And we've got plenty of removal in hand. So our opponent did put Crox in the graveyard here instead of back in the command zone. So, pretty empty graveyard so far. Let's see if they can change that. Opponent passes, we'll draw. Dusk Legion Zolot, a nice draw, and so is Phyrexian Arena, a nice card engine here against the discard deck. The most efficient play would be Zealot plus draw with Tome. So maybe that's still worth it. It is at the risk of the opponent potentially making his discard at the arena. But they haven't played the discard effect so far, at least not a targeted one. And if they use removal on Zealots, I'm not too upset. Alright, Fateful End just gonna deal 3 to my face. So they're on the burn plan. At some point we'll start gaining a life with Magecraft, so I'm not too worried. Tome can also gain 4 life. It's gonna be a tapped Agadim. And our opponent passes, we'll draw. Probably a good time to get Haven in play. And then hit for one, play Arena, and draw with Tome end of turn. And we'll still have Liliana's Triumph up at instant speed. Right, Murder Strider, my Zealot, that's fine.
so they must have more answers for planeswalkers in hand if they're willing to use the murder strider instead of saving it for professor onyx so finding our own discard effect here to have a look and maybe take away planeswalker removal would be nice opponents with five mana passes so probably not a great time to play Professor Onyx into a potential removal spell. Alright, perfect. Thought Seize to have a look. I might wait one more turn so we can Thought Seize and then play Professor Onyx to make sure they didn't draw an answer in the meantime. So I don't want to put Faceless Haven in harm's way. So I could decide to draw with Tome and then maybe still play something else afterwards or I can just pass. And then next turn we'll hit them with the Thought Seize plus Onyx. Or if they're tapped out, maybe Onyx plus Thought Seize to trigger Magecraft. Our opponent wasted their entire turn. Field of Ruin could hit Faceless Haven, that's fine. So we'll draw. And Blood on the Snow, another way to get our Planeswalker back from the graveyard. Alright, so since they have a bunch of mana up, we'll Thought Seize before playing Professor Onyx. And see what's up. And our opponent concedes, so they must have had one answer for a Planeswalker. And after we take it with Thought Seize, our opponent's pretty much dead. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Muxus, Goblin Grandee, so a Goblin Tribal deck. And yeah, we've got a fine hand featuring a bit of ramp and a sweeper, which is going to be pretty key. And dealing with the initial wave of Goblins. Opponent's got the Arcane Signet for ramp. We've got a Mind Stone. And next turn... Maybe play our Dusk Legion Zealots. Alright. More ramp with Heraldic Banner. And a Tin Street Dodger can get in for two. Inquisition a bit late to the party. Let's start by playing Zealots and see what we pick up. Feed the Swarm. Doesn't have any great targets. Alright, let's Inquisition. And Soof, those are some scary goblins. Warchief can discount Muxus. Chieftain pumps goblins, so we'll make it more difficult to block the Dodger. Although they still have the mana to potentially make it unblockable. And then Warboss also can generate an entire army. I'm not too upset if they play a 3-drop since the next turn I'll just Extinction Event on Odd. So maybe we take the Warboss since it leaves behind a token... And then, do I play a tapped Hagra Mauling? I think I do. It's gonna be Goblin War Chief into Chieftain, perfect. So, do I jump to prevent four damage? Um, I don't think that's necessary. Take 10 down to 12. And keep our Zealot as a chum blocker. So this extinction event is going to be pretty brutal. Although they can still cast some Muxus afterwards. On odd. And then we'll keep up Cling to Dusts. To probably draw a card enough turn. But we might need it for life gain. Goblin Trashmaster could destroy my artifacts. Just gonna cycle Cling to Dusts on my own Extinction Event or Inquisition, maybe. Alright, so... Playing Professor Onyx and Minusing seems like bad value. And just killing the Trashmaster in general. I could pass with Fatal Push up, and I can enable Revolt with Mind Stone. Or I can just play Onyx and Plus and hope they don't get to play Muxus next turn. 
Yeah, I mean, most of their haste enablers are gone already, so hasty muxes is probably not going to happen. And then Dreadhorde General seems quite good. Can still cast Return with Aftermath. There has to be an answer here. I'm fine chumping with the Zealot now. Alright, a ringleader with haste is pretty good. Find Chain Whirler and Krenko. So Liliana is gonna take a hit. But then we can play Dreadhorde General and Minus. And then she still survives the Chain Whirler. Opponent will get to destroy my Mind Stone in response, but that's okay. So might as well plus first. Pick up... oof, all these are great. Um, Ritual of Sid doesn't clean up the current goblins, could clean up the next wave. But I think Doomblade's even better. And then Liliana can minus. Opponent gets to destroy my Mind Stone, so be it. Alright, so we've got answers for Krenko, Chain Warler, you know, deals a bit of damage to our Planeswalkers but doesn't kill them. And Mux is again not super scary when a lot of the haste enabling goblins are gone. Skirk Prospector, sure. It's that one I don't mind pushing. Get to trigger Magecraft, gain some life back. And then start by plussing. Phyrexian Arena. Yeah, it's probably still good here. Can feed the Swarm Chain Whirler. Gain some life. Play Phyrexian Arena and still have Doomblade up. And next turn we can make another zombie, maybe gain more life with Cling to Dust if needed. Alright, Siege Gang was a good hit. Could still be in a bit of trouble, but our opponent explodes. Alright, so managed to defeat the goblins here, just had too much card advantage from all our planeswalkers and now Phyrexian Arena as well, plenty of removal. So I think we were going to manage, even though they hit Siege Gang. Could probably find another Sweeper with our Liliana soon. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Velomachus Lorehold deck. So red-white, trying to go big. And what do we think of this hand? Could use some extra lands, but we are on the draw, so that helps. And then if we find two more lands, we get to play some Malacrum to ramp. We've got a bit of discard and interaction. I'll try it. And then ideally find some lanes, find some ramp artifacts. I'm okay thought seizing on turn one. And see hand with Teferi's Protection. Probably don't care about that too much. Sarkon Fireblood and Birth. Well, Sarkon we can Murder Strider. So I probably just take Birth. And then play turn two Fenlurker. We hit our land drops, which is great. And currently no answer for Dread Presence that we know of. Opponent exiles one of their lands. Sarkon's gonna come out to play. It's gonna discard the Fairy's Protection and draw. Ooh, Dark Ritual. So... I think we save that for next turn to ramp out Professor Onyx. And then for now just Murder Strider Sarkon. 
Could also Dark Ritual my Dread Presence, play a Swamp, but doesn't leave enough mana to do anything else. Yeah, Dark Ritual is an exciting card, and getting to play it in Historic Brawl is awesome. So, yeah, I think it's time to go for it. Sack with her Fun Lurker. And Dark Ritual out or Professor Onyx. Welcome to Witherbloom and then do we want Inquisition or Faceless Haven? Sadly, Haven doesn't trigger Dread Presence, but I still want to hit my land drops. And yeah, our opponent concedes the turn for Professor Onyx, just too much for them to handle. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Arada, Heart of Keld. So red, green, landfall, ramp deck. Well, our hand's reasonable, we've got our Cane Signet, which is always great. Bit of removal. We'll try it. Our removal doesn't line up all that great against Rada specifically since she survives Cry and doesn't die to Fatal Push. At least unless we enable Revolt first. Don't have a ton of ways to enable Revolt in this deck. But Baleful Mastery is still a decent answer. And then we can cycle or cling to Dust. Shadow Spear is fine. And then we just want to hit our land drops, find some card draw. Can still fatal push a mana creature here, but nothing. Thought Seize isn't bad. Let's have a look. Alright, Gem Razor, Primal Might, Crasher, Vivian. Vivian's probably the most problematic card, although if they can mute a Gem Razor, they get to blow up my Signet. I think I still take Vivian. And then Cling to Dust probably now. So I can maybe draw into another two mana play. Alright, perfect. Play my Cold Steel Heart. So if we draw land, we can play Professor Onyx. On turn 4, on the play, that's pretty good. It's gonna be Rada, and a Blonde on the Snow, so no Professor Onyx just yet, sadly. I could Baleful Mastery now, to prevent a mutating Gem Razor in the first place. Also prevents them from playing a land for free. And then next turn they can just cast a Gem Razor, but that's okay. Yeah, let's just exile Rada now. And then hopefully we draw land next turn and we can play Onyx. Right, it's gonna be Gilded Goose. They do need double green to mutate Gem Razor, so they won't be able to do so now. And we do a Fatal Push as well to prevent the mutation from taking place. So let's just push the Goose. That's fine. Alright, and get to play Professor Onyx. Tick up. That's Professor Onyx to you. And Snow Covered Swamp enables Blood on the Snow for six, thanks to the Cold Steel Heart to get back Professor Onyx. But Arch is another card draw engine, which is hard to pass up. This will be a bit greedy here. I never thought I'd miss the library. And then hopefully we can find another snow-covered swamp in the near future. And our opponent explodes, since their creatures line up quite poorly against our Professor Onyx, since they don't have haste. So we can just uh, minus to get rid of them and then draw more cards afterwards. 
So yeah, overall, this mono-black historic brawl deck featuring Professor Onyx has been a ton of fun to play, and getting to try out cards like Dark Ritual on Arena for the first time has been an absolute pleasure, so highly recommend Historic Brawl as a format in general, and more specifically this deck as well, which has been great fun to play. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.